Hello, and welcome to the Zero to Hired podcast, the show that helps struggling job seekers find a career that's right for you. In every episode, we have one mission, to provide you with unique tips and strategies from leading industry experts that will get you in front of hiring managers. Enjoy the show. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Zero to Hired podcast. Our special guest today is Marion Bernard. Marion is Ontario's first certified professional resume writer. She's one of six certified employment interview professionals in Canada. She's Canada's first certified job search strategist, and she's Canada's first certified online professional networking strategist. She's proudly affiliated with the PARWCC, the CPC, CDI, BARW, which are all resume associations, and the AuroraBusiness.com. She's a contributor to the following career books, Expert Resume for Managers and Executives, Gallery of Best Resumes for People Without a Four-Year Degree, Best Canadian Resumes, Cover Letter for Dummies Edition 3, and the Best Canadian Cover Letters. Please help me welcome Marion. Hey, Marion. Thank you so much for uh, thank you so much for introducing me. You cannot see how I'm blushing right now, <laughs> and I am thrilled to be a part of your podcast. Yes, I you know this is such a timely topic because resume. We were just uh, Connell and I were just at the Canadian Immigrant Fair last week, and one of the questions, actually one of the things that we ask every person that walked by our booth was, "What's one of your biggest challenges?" And one out of three would say, "My resume doesn't make it through the hiring, or doesn't make it through the the process to get me an interview." So this is why I'm really glad that you're on the podcast today because it really helps us give the right information to the audience members so they can actually get a leg up on their competition. So just to get started, Marion, how did you get started in this particular career? Because you got quite the accolades uh, as part of your, uh, your resume here. So share with us, how did you get into this particular line of work? Well, I actually kind of fell into resume writing. Uh, uh, a lot of people, you know, typically what happens is not everybody winds up doing the career that they were originally trained for. Uh, I originally started life out as an executive secretary, went to the local community college, uh, graduated with honors. And what I was doing, in effect, I was capitalizing on a uh, much higher than average keyboarding speed. Uh, when uh, not even uh, not even ten days after finishing my studies and a good five months before convocation, I landed a departmental level secretarial role at CIL, and the vast majority of uh, people in Canada would know CIL from the consumer side that uh, they manufacture and resell paints, lawn mm -hmm. uh, plant food, lawn fertilizer, that sort of thing. When I first started working at CIL, that would have been considered tip of the iceberg because they also served industry in a lot of other capacities. And uh, at that time, I had worked for uh, three bosses. Uh, three month, three years later, rather, I got promoted to word processing operator, and three uh, three years after that, got promoted to word processing consultant. And the difference between operator and consultant was that I would solve problems as operator. I would solve problems for people in my department. There was about 70 of us. Mm -hmm. As consultant, I would be solving problems for all 1,500 people at our location. Now, wow. at the same time, hmm. uh, I had been there maybe about nine and, a half, uh, nine and a half years and change. And I wanted to start my own side hustle. And my business was originally a secretarial service. Uh, six months after starting my side hustle, uh, CIL underwent a major reorganization. At the time, I didn't think I would be affected because I was told that out of all of the people in my department, I consistently had top performance rankings. And when I found out I was one of 35 people who were affected by the organization, uh, uh, I was in tears on the way home because back then, the idea of being let go from an organization, you hung your head in shame. And although I did have another job to go to, and I got that job through networking, I only, I quit after three days because the pull of running my own business was just too great to resist. And I had said to them at the time, they were fabulous to work with, but I would kick myself if I didn't follow through on my dream of forming my own business. 
And they wound up becoming secretarial clients of mine for about three years afterwards. <laughs> nice. <laughs> now, a lot of my secretarial clients at the time, they would say, well, my brother, my sister, my third cousin once removed, they need to have their resume typed up. And I would look at it and I think, you know, we can pump this up and we can enhance this and magnify that. And I got to the point where I thought, you know, I'm really enjoying the resume writing side more than the secretarial side. And this is when I found out uh, that resume writing organizations exist. I was able to further perfect what I could do. And as a result, as you alluded to in the introduction, my work has been published uh, by uh, a handful of resume writers and resume collections. So uh, right now I am extremely passionate about the idea of making somebody look better on paper because everybody, every job seeker has some benefits, some value that they can offer to a prospective employer. It's up to me to uncover what that is and I can display that beautifully so that a hiring decision maker, my goal, hopefully I get them to salivate in terms of what my client has to offer. Yes, it's, wow, it's, wow. It's, it's, it's interesting how sometimes the turn of events lead us into something, you know, with being let go. And, and actually it, it kind of ties in very well to my story, uh, how I got started in this particular field and started writing about you know employment and looking for work and interview skills was because of something that happened when my team was outsourced back in 2009. Wow. So, so it's it's great to hear that you, you you know you've made quite the impression on the community. And I know I actually met you at a, a CPC, the Canadian Professionals Career oh, oh, Event. Oh, oh, Career Professionals of Canada. Career Professionals <laughs> so, of know. Canada. Sorry, CPC. That's okay. Sometimes you get so stuck and hung up on the acronyms that you forget what it actually means. So yes, the Canadian Professionals of Canada, Canadian, Canadian Career Professionals, something like that. Anyways, <laughs> we'll keep moving forward. I know just hearing you in your introduction and what you talked about, I was ready to give you my resume, even though I wasn't looking for work, ah. because I could tell just from your, your five minute or two minute presentation that you, you did at that event, that you really had a really good grasp on what the market needs today and really and we keep seeing it you know one out of three when we had our booth last week at the canadian immigrant fair one of three um, candidates that walked by our booth the, their biggest challenge was having a good resume mm -hmm. so what are some of the challenges that you see today in resumes that come across your table uh, in a lot of instances, you know, we were all taught back in the day, back in the 1950s, the 1960s, the 1970s, to list an objective statement on the resume, list, uh, you know, list your education first, list your job titles, your duties and responsibilities, and so on and so on. And a document like that is very dry, very template, very cookie cutter. Mm -hmm. Now, that could have served you well back in the 50s, the 60s, the 70s, when you would only be competing against local candidates. I tell all of my clients, I say the days are long gone when they might, uh, the hiring decision maker might have to go through, say, uh, a dozen resumes a week and they sit back and they put their feet up and read your resume for 10 to 15 minutes while they're having their coffee break. These days, I tell people, not only are you competing against locals from your city, and we're located in the greater Toronto area, I tell people, we are also, you're also competing against individuals from Southern Ontario, all of Ontario, all of Canada, and beyond. Yes. So look at it from the point of view of the hiring decision maker, whereas they used to have to go through, say, a dozen resumes a week. These days, they could be going through 500 resumes a day. And I don't know if uh, you knew this, but Google uh, uh, in the U.S., they can be fielding as many as 7,000 resumes a day, and these are unsolicited. This is not in connection with an actual posting. Everybody and their brother wants to work for a prominent organization, and mm -hmm. Google is a fabulous example of that. And you figure that the hiring decision makers there are beyond running around like chickens with their heads cut off, realistically. Because the hiring decision makers, and there's always more than one, because they are so overloaded, 
they've had to change their approach in terms of how they assess a resume. And what I say to clients these days is that if you can't tell them in 10 seconds or less the actual job title you want to apply for, because regretfully the days are gone when the hiring decision maker is going to guess. And secondly, if you can't articulate what positively sets you apart from the 499 other individuals per day, if both of those pieces of information can't be located in 10 seconds or less, then regretfully the resume does not advance. I tell all of my clients, I'm here to do what I can to get your resume to pass through the different levels. Wow. You're, you're absolutely correct. There's no way that any hiring manager today, I know I've seen it, where there's 300 emails or 300 resumes waiting in a queue. There's no way you can get through all that content, even in a week, even in a month. Like it's just nobody's spending time looking at resumes today. You really do only have a few seconds to make that impression on them. So what is one of the recommendations that you would make or, or suggest for a, a candidate that's going through the process today? So what's something that they could quickly do to their resume to make it stand out just well, a little bit? Well, right off the top, they have to articulate, you know, here's the kind of work that I'm looking for. So job title right off the top. Also determine, okay, what sets me apart from other candidates? I'm not talking about puffing up your chest or boasting or anything like that. What I tell clients is you want to tell the truth. Uh, uh, rather, I want to make sure that I'm telling the truth on your resume. I want to make that truth shine. And I want to generate a wow, I'm impressed response from the hiring decision makers. But at, at the same time, you do not want to lie on a resume. Uh, I was reading some documentation quite some time ago. Unfortunately, people think that they have poetic license to puff up the credentials. <laughs> And even CEOs of Radio Shack and Yahoo in the U.S. have not been immune to that. When it's been found out that they've lied on their resume, they were terminated. So yeah. you've got to tell the truth, but you don't want to go overboard. Yeah, and actually, there's ways of telling the truth. Actually, you touched on a really good thing. So there's a actually, my mind right now is just like, I got a whole bunch of things going off. Um, in terms of job title, so this is a big one. And especially for newcomers to Canada, I think there's a big challenge between what is a proper job title and back in their country. Because like you mentioned, jobs today isn't just local. You're not competing against people in your neighborhood, in your community, in your city. You're competing with people all across the world. So for those that are outside of Canada looking to gain employment in Canada, how do you determine what is the appropriate job title on the resume that they're that they're working on? There is a website that they can go to, and I'm just going to look it up as we speak. Mm -hmm. so I'm just going to have you bear with me for a second here. Sure. They can go to the National Occupation Classification, NOC, and I'll give you that website link if you'd like. So yeah. that this way, individuals can determine, um, you know, actual job titles. And the, um, you know, the list is extremely extensive. So it would be, and I'll, um, I'll spell it out here. So N like November, mm -hmm. O like October, yep. C like Charlie, mm -hmm. dot, E like Easter, S like Saturday, D like December, C like Charlie, dot, G like green, C like Charlie, dot CA. Okay. So what I'll do, Marion, is uh, include a link in the show notes so people can go to that link directly. Uh, what oh, we do, what actually, we do. Actually, uh, uh, my mistake, I'm just, going, I'm just going to extend on that. So after okay. the dot CA, yeah. uh, forward slash, yeah. uh, uh, capital E, um, and then lowercase, and like November, G L I S like Saturday H mm -hmm. forward slash H O M like mother E dot A S like Saturday P like Peter X like X ray. Okay. Okay. So I'll make sure the, the link, we'll make sure that we get the right link into the show notes so people can quickly down or quickly link from there to the website. I didn't even know such a site existed. So this is fantastic. Uh, 
a fantastic it's a it's a great little nugget actually it's a great little nugget on how do you do that translation from even within industries today and I, what i'm finding is a lot of people are are transferring between different industries mm-hmm. so having the capability to connect and link how you do in one industry and how it relates into another and how that job title changes from one industry to another is also great. So thank you for, for sharing that nugget with us. So you talked about setting yourself apart. So how do you do that within the first two or three lines of your resume? What I do when I'm working with my clients, I joke around that every organization on the planet, be it for-profit, not-for-profit, academia, institution, government, you name it, they all listen to that American radio station, WIIFF, in other words. Let's do that again. W-Y-I-F-M. In other words, what's in it for me, the company? Why should I consider hiring you? How can you make us better, faster, stronger? And in order for a candidate to sport the best resume possible, they've got to stop thinking about the skills that they offer. Certainly skills have their place, but hiring decision makers are more interested in terms of Uh, Rather, the job seeker should be more interested in terms of what the company and the hiring decision makers are looking for. In other words, what benefits, what value does the job seeker offer? Mm -hmm. Can I give you an example of what I'm looking for? Yeah, 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 for sure. I'd love to hear an example. Okay, I'm going to use myself as an example. Now, if I were to tell a prospective client needing a resume, if I were to say my keyboarding speed is 127 words a minute and I don't say anything else, now that sounds pretty lofty when you consider that the average keyboarding speed is uh, anywhere from 40 to 60 words a minute. Uh, now, the, you know, the uh, job seeker might think, okay, that's all fine and well, but they might ask, how does that affect me, the job seeker, and why should I care? What I say, keeping in mind the WIIFM philosophy, what's in it for me, I will instead tell a job seeker, because my typing speed is 127 words a minute, I can offer you while you wait service. And I'll tell you, that is unheard of in the resume writing community. Typically, our colleagues, uh, you might, a uh, job seeker might retain one of our colleagues to write their resume. And some of our colleagues are taking anywhere from two to six weeks to return a first draft to them. Mm -hmm. In my case, because my keyboarding speed is 127 words a minute, and I'm actually writing the resume either over the phone or via Skype in real time, we're typically chatting for about two to three hours. As I mentioned, I write everything in real time. My clients receive first drafts in under 24 hours. So the benefit to my call uh, to uh, any job seekers about the prospect of retaining me is that I can guarantee they'll be able to submit their applications much more quickly than retaining one of my colleagues. Now, I'm not bad mouthing any of our resume writing colleagues because the work they do is stellar. But if they might be faced with a pressing deadline, not 15 minutes from now, please, <laughs> but you know, if they're facing a pressing deadline in a few days, then I'm in a position where I am more likely able to help them than my colleagues who have other obligations going on. Yeah, actually, so that was actually one of the things that really caught my attention when you spoke was the while you wait, having your resume done while they're on the phone. And I know one of the things, and this is the unfortunate part, a lot of candidates that are out there looking for work, they're always last minute, not all of them, but there's quite a few of them that are last minute and they're always looking for that. I need to get this done for tomorrow. And how do I do this? And how do I make sure it's proper? Like, it's fantastic. That's even like a value add that you have. It's like, wow. While, while, while you wait service, like, it's just like, that's not, it's totally custom and it's, and it's totally genuine to you. And when you talk about standing out and being different, that definitely makes you different. Exactly. And what any good resume writer will do is we can, like I said, uncover what sets our job seeking clientele apart from their mm. uh, you know, other individuals. So I used myself as an example there. Yes. Yeah. And actually it's, it's one of the things that we do as well, you know, just to stand apart and be different. It's, it's yeah. Wow. 
Fantastic. Actually, so one of the other points that you touched on was telling the truth. And actually, this one, I think a lot of people feel like because they're not qualified enough or they don't have all the required job skills that the job offer is looking for, that they need to to get around that and I guess fudge or lie on the resume. So share some of your experience with that. Because I know you had one particular experience uh, you told me a story about somebody who was in a particular industry and trying to break out of that industry. And you did it by telling the truth, but doing it in a different way. Mm -hmm. Now, um, I'm actually thinking of one example that came across just yesterday. Um, I'm, uh, I was delivering interview coaching for one of my clients across the country. And she's in a situation where she wants to change careers from A mm -hmm. to B. And at the moment, she's, uh, she's experiencing, uh, you know, she, she's filing a harassment suit against her employer, and she didn't want that to come out in the interview. So what I said to her, because she's changing careers, you know, she can, you know, she can say very truthfully, I'm proud of the contributions that I've made at my current employer, but the lure of career B is too great to resist. Mm -hmm. So we just left it like that. So I kept everything very positive, but we are telling the truth. Yeah. So is is there a specific language? Because you talked about keeping the language positive within the resume. What specifically do you need to insert in there to make it sound positive? Look at the silver lining to the dark cloud, realistically. You know, okay. what, what are the, you know, what are the, you know, what, what are the positive outcomes of this? You know, cause you know, somebody might say, well, I've got 20 negatives in front of me and uh, I'm, I'm being overburdened, that sort of thing. And I'm thinking, well, what is, you know, what is something that you can be grateful for and focus on that one grateful piece? Mm -hmm. So very good. So this is great information. I, I hope the audience is eating this up because this is fantastic. So in terms of some of the things that, you know, have really stood out for you as a, as a resume writer, what's been something that's wowed you that you've seen on a resume recently? Uh, uh, I'm thinking in terms of some of the things that I've seen from my colleagues. A lot of them now are... Um, uh, composing what are known as infographic resumes, where mm. the pictures, the pictures and symbols tell a story. Now they look phenomenal, and a lot of them are used in the, you know, the video production, the graphic arts industry, that sort of thing. You can certainly use an infographic resume outside of video production and graphic artistry and graphic design. Mm -hmm. I will point out that they will not. Uh, uh, pass the applicant tracking system. So you would need uh, more of a vanilla resume, that sort of thing. So take out the graphics, put more text. And actually, this is something that a lot of people are fearful of because they want to make the resume stand out and look different. Mm -hmm. But you have to get through, like you said, the ATS. So the, Absolutely. So what do you need to put specifically in your resume so it actually gets through that ATS? So I'm really well, glad that you touched on that because this is really important. There are certain factors. And interestingly enough, uh, the, what, uh, what is acceptable in the ATS realm keeps getting updated. And through Career Professionals of Canada, I recently completed a technology-optimized resume uh, course. Mm -hmm. So... <laughs> Once upon a time, you could only submit something in plain text. Now you can submit it in DocX. And in some instances, they, you know, they will accept a PDF. Now, that's a huge change from what I was originally taught in that some applicant tracking systems are so old that they, they might not be able to penetrate through a PDF. From the company's point of view, it, you know, it's, it's not like a cell phone where you upgrade to the latest and greatest every two to three years or so. Mm -hmm. Some companies, their applicant tracking systems are 10 years old. And applicant tracking has actually been around since the late 80s, but it didn't really gain traction until around 2002 or so. The older applicant tracking systems won't be able to penetrate a PDF. The newer ones certainly can, but you know you don't necessarily want to phone up the organization and say, you know, will your ATS be able to read my PDF? <laughs> so not exactly. So I guess this is really important for the candidate to pay attention to the system that they're applying to, because I know a lot of systems will tell you what they accept, exactly. either a DocX or a Doc Doc or a Doc a Dot Doc 
extension or PDF. I, so I guess it doesn't really, so what's your feeling around that? Because I would think, you know, once you submit a document, like things can get changed in a document. A PDF is a more permanent version. So is there really a difference between the two? The DocX and the PDF? Mm -hmm. Um, Not from the hiring decision maker's perspective, no. Uh, I would also say use a common font. I mean, some of my favorite common fonts are Tahoma, Calibri, um, I'm thinking out loud, uh, Georgia, Verdana. I'm just doing this off the top of my head, Uh, Arial. I would mm. stay away from Times New Roman because everybody and their you know brother uses Times New Roman. I would also stay away from using the Microsoft Word template because it, you know it's, it's like you're going to drown in a sea of white sort of things. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so this is good. So talking about templates and and resume, what is your thought, your professional opinion around the length of a resume? Because I know that's one of the things that we get asked a lot. We're, we're very big on having the shortest amount of content, having the appropriate content, but in the least amount of words. I think I'm going to shatter a resume myth here. Okay. I've had people say to me, well, can you do what you, you know, Marion, do what you can to make my resume one page. And I say, I'll, you know, I'll do it if we don't have, uh, if we only have enough relevant information for one page. Mm-hmm. But I've worked with students where they've warranted a full two pages. I've worked with managers and we've just needed one page. So it depends on the individual realistically. Uh, it depends on what they bring to the table. Are they looking at remaining in the same career? Are they looking at changing careers? That sort of idea. But I would uh, I would aim to go no more than two pages because one of the mantras in the resume writing community is write tight. Write tight. Write tight. Well, that's good. So so two pages is okay, and you find that a lot of I guess employers are accepting those because I know absolutely okay, and that's always the ideal is always to have them on single-sided not yeah, double-sided no no double-sided so i so i just wanted to touch on the infographics because that's an interesting one and that's a, something that i've seen a lot of higher level people start to bring into the interview so would you recommend preparing what type of in, like one type of resume for the ats and then another one for the interview absolutely Now, actually, one of the best ways that you can land a job, I mean, if you could avoid having your resume get filtered through the ATS, that would be great. Uh, In order to prepare for our chat today, I have to tell you, I binge listen to your podcasts. (laughs) And the, the uh, the one that carried the most resonance with me was episode 10. Uh, This is Vanille, who is uh, based in India, Mm -hmm. and I was just so impressed with what he was able to do to ultimately land a job. And I thought to myself, "You go." (laughs) Yeah, he's where he's. Yeah, he's one of our. I I don't even know how to describe him, but we're definitely very proud of him and and, and what he's been able to accomplish. And I'm I'm glad that we had the opportunity to to share his story with the community because that was fantastic. So. So resume, so in terms of, you know, tightening up and and wrapping up the resume, what's one of the things that, you know, what are two or three things at the end of a resume that should always be included? Because I see people always put that line, you know, if references are required. Ah. Now, I will point out that you can get away with using references in a few different uh, career vocations in the phrase uh, phraseology references provided upon request. Mm -hmm. Definitely included in the academic community. So anybody applying for a uh, school board job, that sort of idea. Law enforcement, they want to see references provided upon request. And believe it or not, the interior decorating community wants to see that because you talk about a competitive industry, interior decorating and design, uber competitive. So they want that information on there. For the rest of us, I tell people not necessary to list the phraseology references provided upon request. It's a gimme. It's it's implied that uh, hiring decision makers will ask for references down the road. But... um, so so this is a good question, and I'm sure a lot of my audience members are probably thinking this right now. Would you actually ever include a reference? Uh, only, um, 
I would typically make it available if the posting expressly requests it. Okay. I would not include it otherwise because uh, you could be making available, you know, information regarding a person, their name, their job mm -hmm. title, their company, their address, phone number, email address. Uh, that could be crossing confidential boundaries. What I say to people with regard to interview coaching, feel free to make available your reference sheet. If, if the hiring decision makers want to look at it, that's great. If they don't, it's not a personal affront because their time could be scheduled really tightly. And although they'd love to see the reference page, they might not have the time to devote to it. Not yeah. right away anyway. Actually, so one of the things that we tell our clients to do is have your references already available or have your references as recommendations on your LinkedIn profile. Because I, I feel like you should always have the continuation of your story from your resume should take them to a LinkedIn profile because that's your professional page. Absolutely. And within the recommendation section, that's where people can learn more about you from a reference perspective without actually including it on your resume. Well, so mind you, what I do is if somebody has three recommendations or more on their LinkedIn profile, mm -hmm. uh, immediately underneath their name, address, um, um, phone number, email address, if they've got three or more recommendations, I will actually say view X number of recommendations at, and I will uh, pop in their LinkedIn URL into wow. the resume. That's fantastic. Actually, that's a, a tidbit of information I never thought of, but yes. <laughs> so... Yeah, no, it, and it's a, it's a great way to continue that conversation from the single page because what your resume should do is generate some uh, some interest in you and then it should take them somewhere else. And that story should always continue somewhere else. And in today's, today's, you know, today's competitive market, you want to get that advantage where people can learn more about just what's on a piece of paper, but also learn what's offline. And yeah. LinkedIn is a whole other discussion, but... Yes, absolutely. And I was, I was going to say that the job seeker should not regurgitate their resume onto LinkedIn. There are some things that, got, that are common that cross over, mm -hmm. but there are some things that are very different too. Yeah. No, yeah. And so this is big. So don't copy and paste your resume because everybody thinks LinkedIn is an online resume. No, well, mm -hmm. no. We've been trying to break that because it's not true. It's not. It's it's something else and it's completely different. So just remember that for the audience members out there listening to this call, res your LinkedIn is not your online resume. There's, a, there's other formats for that, but I'm glad we got to touch on that. So Marion, if people wanted to learn more about you and you know how to get more information, where could they go to get this? Uh, they're welcome to have a peek at my website, and my website is resumeexpert.ca. I'll spell it out. Mm -hmm. And um, I'll mention, too, that if you go to the testimonial section of my website, you're going to see easily 65 and counting testimonials on there from very satisfied uh, job seekers. Uh, it is spelled R as in Robert, mm -hmm. E as in Easter, S like Saturday, U uh, as in umbrella. M like mother, E, E, um, one more time, R E S U M E, uh, E X P E R T dot C A. Okay. So I'll make sure I include that link. Can people also look you up on LinkedIn if they absolutely, wanted to? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. My, uh, what they can do is they can search out my name, Marion Bernard, and mm -hmm. I spell my name M A R I A N. Uh, my last name is Bernard, B-E-R-N-A-R-D. Excellent. So thank you for that. That's a lot of great information. I know uh, I got some really great tidbits from that. I'm going to make sure that we also include all the links that you mentioned throughout the discussion that we had, along with your website link and your LinkedIn profile. Marianne, once again, thank you for your time today. This is invaluable. Like There's just so much good content and so much good information here. I know that the, the, the listener will be able to walk away feeling a little bit more confident that, you know, they can actually stand out with their resume. So thank oh, you for that. Oh, Sorry. you're welcome. The pleasure was mine, John. I'm so glad we had a chance to, uh, uh, to speak about this. Yes. So thank you. And uh, just uh, for the Zero to Hire uh, audience, thank you for, for checking in and for listening to the podcast and for the support that you've given us. Uh, we've been growing and it's been amazing just to hear some of the feedback that we've heard from people. So thank you for, for listening in and thank you for supporting. 
And thank you for listening to the Zero to Hired podcast. Thank you for listening to the Zero to Hired podcast. Make sure you check out our website, www.zerotohired.com and download your free resume template that's proven to get results, complete with examples and guidelines. Make sure you tune in as we interview leading industry experts who provide tips and strategies to help you get the career that's right for you.